are back. I'm going to recap what we covered at the end of the last class. This will be more finite state machine examples. So if you remember, we're looking at that laser timer finite state machine where we want it off, then on, on, on. With the output of one, we went through the design steps. Remember, a general form of a finite uh, state machine with the sequent converting a finite state machine to a sequential circuit. You uh, have a combinational logic part and a sequential logic part of which you have inputs that feed the combinational. You have outputs that come from the combinational. Whatever you determine in the combinational will identify the next states in your m-bit state register and that's your sequential circuit down here. And the sequential circuit is driven by a clock, typically a positive edge triggered clock. The uh, processes for uh, controller design, capture the finite state machi machine, set up the architecture, encode the states, fill in the truth table, implement combinational logic. We kind of looked at this in a little bit more detail. So again, the controller design, we had already got the finite state machine. We uh, set up the architecture again. It's pretty much the same combinational and the sequential down here. N identifies the next states. S is the current state. You encode the states. That's simply just giving it a number, whether it be, uh, or you count up the number of uh, um, different states that you have and you find the numbering for it, which is based on a, um, which is based on a power of two. Keep in mind, if we had five states, how many bits would we need to identify, or how many registers would we need to identify the state? If we had five different states, hint, hint, power of two. Is 5 a power of 2? No, which that means you have to choose what? Is 6 a power of 2? 7? Why not 4? Can, could I use 4? No, 4 doesn't give me enough state numbers to uh, identify it, so you have to go up to 8. So that you would be, if you had another state in here, it would be like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 and one zero zero, so a total of uh, five states. It would just be that six, seven, um, I'm sorry, five, six, and seven would not, be, uh, uh, would not be defined or used. Thereafter, we uh, uh, remember step number uh, two here, fill in the truth table. So we created a truth table which says this is the current state S1 and S0, this is B, the input. Based on the current states and the input, what are the next states and the output? Once we've identified what the, uh, the next states are, then we can create a, uh, um, and we could create a uh, uh, combinational logic circuit to define that. Keeping in mind, of course, that uh, the inputs identify, or the states identify what state we're in. And in this case, B is the input, defines if we switch to another state. And uh, obviously, the, uh, the next state is who you're going off to. In this case, since you did not press a button, then you stay in the same state. But if you did press the button, you go to the next state. The combinational logic that you're identifying for this is going to be, first of all, each one of these, X, N1, and N0, will have its own logic uh, equation with its own set of gates. Remember, we went through and we identified that in the last, in the last uh, exercise. And in this case, uh, 
Those are going to be the, the actual equations, which the combinational logic is going, to be, uh, is going to be defined by the following gates associated with x. There's the uh, combinational logic associated with the output x. This is the output identified n1 based on what the inputs are. And then the, uh, um, the output for N1 is going to be determined by uh, um, this equation here. What's the one thing you notice about this? When does B ever impact anything? B only impacts anything when the state is 0, 0. Then it will allow you to transition to the next state, 0, 1. So if you remember, well, if you look at this, the only instance of using B is right here, going from state 0, 0 to 0, 1. And so our equations and our combinational logic show that as well, that B is only, uh, B is only used for changing n, 0. Let's look at another example, because uh, this becomes more clue the more uh, examples you go through. Or actually, at this point, we're going to look at the uh, controller's behavior. So let's say, well, first of all, one thing to note, do we ever change anything for, or do we ever change anything in here when there's not a rising edge of the clock? No, we don't. So let's take a look at uh, clock. There's no clock at all. We're starting at state 0. And so if we look at what the other values are, well, it's now solely on combinational logic because we start out with the initial condition. Remember this little arrow right up there? That little one right up there says what our initial condition is before any clocks happen. So we have 0, 0. We have B, which is going to be, um, which we're going to set at 0 to begin with. And so what is our, our output N is going to be all zeros still. So that's our initial state. Every, all, our whole system is 0. So Let's take a look at another instance of this. If we press, for example, nothing. All right, we're not pressing uh, anything at all. In this case, we have uh, a clock. So let's take a look. When we had the rising edge of the clock, what was B? Zero, right? Is anything going to change? No. According to our digital logic, we're still going to stay in state number 0, 0. The outputs of everything, you can check the outputs, even though this output right here is, uh, is now at this point with B rising. At this point right here, it was all 0. But when we put a B here, notice that our output now is going to be 1 for N, 0, and 0 for N1. That's going through our digital logic. But do we notice anything else changing from S1 and S0 coming out? No, because we haven't clocked it. So when we finally introduce a clock and B is 1, then based on the output through a gate, notice a slight gate delay right here we are going to see that the output for x is going to be 1 because now we have, uh, we have the state either uh, n1 or n0 is, uh, is a 1. So we always output a 1 like we say right here. And then look what happens with our logic. We went from n1, 0 to n1, 1 to our digital logic now is n1, is going to be 1 and n0 is going to be 0. We're in state number 0. Even though we, re we uh, lower b now later, we are now in state 0, 1. 
and will z one zero right here one into uh, um, the register for s one and zero for the register for s zero. When are those going to change? So are these right here, these inputs? Are they clocked in yet? They won't be clocked in until that goes high. Let's see, do I have, nope. So if I were to have now a rising edge of the clock, B is still low, what would happen at this point? At that point then, that would be clocked in. This would become one. This would become zero inside based on the rising edge of the clock. X would still be one. And now we're gonna put, let's see, this will be one. This will be zero. So our output of X will still be one. Let's look at our logic here. This is now zero. Zero is going to be uh, output or input here. So that'll be that will become one. Oh man, come on, look better. One. And what is this over here? This is now a one coming up. A one and a one is a one. One or anything over here is going to be that's going to become a one. And let's look it up here. Oh, this is also a one. I'm sorry, that'll become a 1 and that will become a 1 because this is a 0. We're nodding it there. This will also become a 1. Well, it stays 1 as it is. These both now will become 1 there and 1 there. So this state over here is 1, 0. And the next state coming up is going to be 1, 1. So when I get a rising edge of the clock way down here, the new state down there is going to be 1, 1. Let's look at another example. And this is actually a fairly easy one. What I want to do is I want to assume that I'm going to press a button and the button will only be recorded once. Now this could be, this could be a nice circuit that could actually feed this circuit, right? We could add, we could add uh, the button onto this, so it'll, um, even though I hold the button down for a certain amount of time, it will not give me a continuous press of the button. It'll just give me one single but, but, one single button, rise and fall. So that looks pretty easy. Hmm, what is our state going to be for this? Well. Let's do a state diagram. So we're going to capture the uh, finite state machine. We're going to stay in here. Let's look, remember what our inputs are. BI, B out. And we're going to have a clock. So we have our B out is going to be zero if we're not pressing the button at all. So just keep on going around and around and around and around. When we finally press the button, it'll go over here to B1, or I'm t to the state B, and B0 will be, you'll have a single output of a one. Now if you're still holding down the B input button, it'll go to this state and stay there forever until you release the button and then it'll go back to the initial state. However, if sometime in here you release the button, then it will go back to the A state. Does that seem easy? Does it? It's just identifying how it operates. Everybody get that? Yes? So what did we say the next step of designing would be? 
It is what? Well, it's, uh, our architecture is always going to be some input to the combination of logic, some output, and then we're going to have states here. How many, uh, how many states do we have? Three. So how many D flip-flops do we need to represent that? The power of two, remember? So just to recap, if we have two states, so this is a state, how many flip-flops do you need? If you have only two states, how many flip-flops do you need? One. If you have three states, how many flip-flops do you need? Two. If you have four states, how many flip-flops do you need? Two. If you have five states, how many flip-flops do you need? Three. Six, seven, eight. Three, three, three. If you have nine states, how many flip-flops do you need? Four. Remember, a power of four that you have enough to represent the number of states. So that means the largest state number here that you really could use would be one, zero, zero, one. Hey, what do you know? That looks like the binary representation of digital nine. The largest state number here would be One, one, one. Oh, actually, it would be one, one, one here. Oh, this could be actually one, zero, zero, zero. So it would be minus one. Sorry. If this were seven. It could be one, one, zero, one. So what do we have over here? Well, we. Uh, what's the next thing to do? Encode the states. So instead of A, B, and C. We have 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0. Now we have a state over here called 1, 1, right? Will we ever visit that one? No, you'll never go to that one. So then we do the truth table. I'm going to make you do the truth table. So right now, spend some time and identify what the truth table would be for this particular instance. So how many columns on the input? Three. What are the three inputs? S1, S0, and BI. B input, right? And what will be our outputs from that? BO, N1, meaning the next and N0 for the next state as well. All right, go to it. Turn to your neighbor and figure it out. All right, we're back. And uh, um, one thing that I didn't mention to you is there's the uh, situation that there's another state out there of 1, 1, and you really don't want to be in that state. So if you find yourself in that state, really you want to go back to the initial state. In other words, remember the initial state, that right there. So if any chance you find yourself 1, 1, 1, 1, you find yourself in that state, you just want to, oh, I don't like all this. So you'll just go back to uh, state 0, 0, and you don't want to output anything because you don't know, it, it's not a regular state you should be in. All right? So it depends on... Who teaches you, uh, if it's in the book, uh, if this uh, is, uh, instructor wants this. Sometimes it's good to see that, oh yeah, there are other states other than the ones that uh, are specifically specified in how you operate. They all should go back to the initial state. So I just threw that in there just for fun. All right? So if I'm in state 00, zero and I'm not pressing BI, I just want to stay in the same state. Correct? However, if I'm in state 
um, if I'm in state uh, uh, 1 or 0, 0 and I press BI, then where do I want to go? Well, according to this, I want to output 0 but go to state 0, 1. So in this case, I go to 0, 1 and I output 0. So now I'm in state 0, 1. There I am. What do I want to output? Well, I want to output 1. So I got to make sure that I output 1 there. And what's the next state I want to go to? Well, if I'm pressing B I, B input, so if I'm pressing B input, I want to go to this next state over here, which is 1, 0. If I'm not pressing B I, then I want to go to state 0, 1, or 0, 0, sorry. Now I'm in state 1, 0. I want to output zeros, so I'll output zeros. And when I'm there, if I press, if I keep pressing the BI there, because remember, I pressed, I pressed BI to go to this state. I, I was still pressing BI to go to this state. And if I'm still holding down BI, I want to stay in the state, same state. So if I'm still pressing BI, I'm going to 1, 0. However, if I'm no longer pressing B input, then I go to state 0, 0. Any questions? So now that I've got this, I want to get design equations for B0, N1, and N0. So just looking at this, I only see one instance of a 1 there. So what does that tell me? It's one single gate, and it'll be a, what kind of a gate? It'll be a what? An AND gate. So if we look at N0, I know the only instance when it's like that is when S1 not, S0 not, and B input. Now let's look at the uh, B0. Well, there's two of them, and they're right next to each other. So what it tells me, and it doesn't matter what BI is, so I will know that B0 will always be output based on S1 and S0. Do you agree with that? I could do a K-map for this, but I, I could just look at it and see that's what's going to happen. This one down here might be a little bit more complex. So let's actually do a K-map for that one. So for N1, again, we're looking at a K-map. So we will look at the input of S1, which will be either 0 or 1, and S0, B, I, so B. Hey, that's funny. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Oops. Here we go, sorry. And what do we have here? Well, it turns out that this position is a 1, and hmm, this position is a 1. <coughs> oh, that doesn't look like fun at all. So this is going to be how many uh, parts of the equation? So we're going to actually have to see, these are individual ones that can't be grouped together. So it's going to have to be S1 prime, S0, B, I, or S1, S0 prime, B, I. Hey, let's see if I got it right. Everybody?
everybody wrote that down. And by the way, these will be online too, so you can you can look at them as as, as they come along. And oh yeah, I did it right. I filled in the truth table right. I'm so I'm so happy. And my uh, my circuit, uh, I did the truth table. This is what it turns out to be. All right. I want to do something a little bit different. So. Sometimes when you design, the order that you put these in may help you, may not. Who knows? Well, let's, let's take a look. What would happen if I built my truth table like this? Oops. Would you notice anything different? Do you think? Or what if I built my truth table like this? Would my truth table and the resulting equations look any different? Hmm. So what I want you to do is I want you to turn to your neighbor and define these two, two, two truth tables, right? And then see if these equations that result from that truth table change any. Okay? Go to it. We are back, so let's look at what I have versus what you have. Do you even have anything? Well, let's take a look at the, uh, the first one I, I had you look at, and that is uh, this one right here. Well, all I did is I reorganized this column right here, and you know what? This is still 1, right? And if we look at n zero, this will still be S1 not S0 not BI. S1 not S0 not BI. Yeah, it's the same thing. These are still together over here. The only thing that differs, or the only thing I should say that's the same is S1 not S0. S1 not S0. Okay. Uh, and then these two are nowhere near each other. So this will be S1 not S0 BI. Oh, S1 not S0 BI, same thing. And then if I look at this one, S1, S0 not BI, oh yeah, it's the same thing. So it looks like it doesn't matter if I change the order of stuff uh, on this side, right? What if I change it on both sides? So here we go. Uh, ooh, this, this is favorable. I got these two next to each other, right? And that's good, right? Yes, no? Well, no, not really, because remember this is zero goes there, one goes there, one goes over here, and zero goes there. Are these? Now, they're still apart. You can't join them up together. And in this case, well, now these two are apart, right? Well, let's see. What do we have here? Uh, this is BI... Uh, S1 not S0. Uh, BI S1 not S0. Oh, that's the same thing. What about this one here? Oh, yeah. It, it looks like it's... Oh, I got these wrong. Sorry. <laughs> Did that again. Um, S1 S0 not... S1 S0 not BI. It's the same thing. So really, it doesn't matter which way you uh, you organize these. It is recommended you do it consistently. And how do we do this consistently? So what I've shown you, oh by the way, for this right here, they're right next to each other. So 
it still doesn't get uh, uh, changed. So what we've, uh, what we've showed you is that it's usually best to say that you're going to put the states first and then any other inputs after the states and then the next states first and then any outputs after that. That makes things a lot easier to see because look at this. State 0, 0, state, uh, next state 0, 0. You actually can see a lot easier when your states are changing. So it's best to have it in the same order. Yes, sir? The output is always associated to this input, right? In the combinational logic. So here we have the combinational logic. S1 and S0, as well as BI, will identify what your output will be. So you notice in this case, your output is 0. Well, right here. Your output is 0 when your current state is 0, 0, and your input BI. See, it actually, in this case, it doesn't matter what your output is, your out, or your input, I should say. Your input, when you're in this state, if your input is BI or your input is BI naught, what's your output? Zero. It's still zero. But in this case, the output is more associated with your current state not the next state. So that's the important thing to note, is that your output notice is being identified by your current state. Your next state does not affect your, your, uh, your output. So that's important to note. All right? We'll see an example of that uh, in the next one as well. To answer your question, you just look very sad. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I will just go on, thank you. <laughs> All right. I want to generate the sequence 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, and repeat that forever. All right? So. Each value is going to be there for one clock cycle, right? And why would you have something like this? Perhaps to create a pattern to like Christmas lights, right? Or control magnets of a stepper motor. So this is actually something that you can use to, uh, and actually it would be a little bit different than this, but uh, we'll, we'll go with that one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw my finite state machine, right? So I want you right now to draw this finite state machine. Turn to your neighbor and do it. All right, I asked if this is a trick question. That's well, not really a trick question or quick trick design, right? What is the input to this entire, com what is the input to the combinational the design, the de combinational circuit? Well, it's combinational. It's just the states, S1 and S2. Is there any other input? No, all right? How many outputs are there? Four, four individual bits, right? And uh, how many states? Four. So we're going to look at a finite state machine, a, a drawing that's going to look like this with uh, the outputs W, X, Y, Z. And your initial state is going to be, actually, we can just pick one. And so I pick the first one, right? A, B, C, D, just go around and around and around. And those, those are your outputs, right? And uh, 
They will transition always on a clock signal. And then we will uh, say, oh yeah, that's our combinational circuit. Notice, no input over there, right? There's our states. So we're going to have how many different lines in our truth table? Four, all right? We're going to have how many columns in our outputs? Six. Six. Do the truth table. So let's look at the uh, let's look at the results. Yeah, I had you do the truth table, and uh, you should have gotten something like this. Oh, they put. Uh, w, X, Y, Z all the way on that side, I would have put N1 and N0 on the left. But uh, uh, these are the equations that hopefully you got. Notice that uh, you know W, W, and Z are really simple because it's uh, there's two of them and they're grouped together, right? N1 is, oh, look at that. Exclusive or S1, S0. And then uh, N1 is, uh, is based on not S0. Because you're basically going from even to odd, even to odd state. Is it? Anybody do an exclusive or for this one? Uh, yeah, I did. You did? Yeah. You, you're not just pulling my leg, right? No, it's right okay, okay. I'll, I'll believe you. I'll believe you. I'll believe you. <laughs> and then uh, this would be your eventual uh, circuit that you would draw for this one. W, X, Y, Z is your outputs. Um, remember, there's no inputs over here to the combinational logic other than the current state from your uh, sequential logic uh, parts. And with that, I don't have enough time to do any more. So this is, again, another finite state machine example.